Welcome to the Bumble Cast. I'm your host Ian Flynn the Bumble King and joining me as always is my slightly less robotic compatriot, Kyle J.C.R.B. Krauss. Ah, uh, that's right. Ian's still out sick. Correct. His weak, fleshy lungs fail him. The issue has not been diagnosed or treated. Well, he's seeing a doctor, so... I will be taking his place. Uh, you'll be reading his answers in the Q&A... But for now, we're welcoming back Aaliyah Baker to the show for more Q&A action. Entering standby mode. That's right. Aaliyah Baker is back with us on the Bumblecast. Welcome back. Welcome back, Aaliyah. Here to bring my suffering upon the people again. (laughs) Oh, okay. (laughs) I didn't know you were suffering. I thought you were just causing them suffering by being the Bumble Queen. And being it's the both. one, the one who's in charge is oh, it's is both. it? Is it? Oh, okay. I am the queen of suffering. <laughs> it has many forms, many meanings. Okay. <laughs> so I was going to ask how you were doing, but I'm I'm assuming that's how you're doing. <laughs> well, how's everyone doing at this point? Um, <laughs> well, kind of tuck, tucked into your house, locked up under quarantine. Oh, that's nothing new for me. I'm used to it. Well, then good for you for being ahead of the curve. Going outside is for chumps. <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, I mean, you live in like the fourth circle of hell or whatever, so. Oh, it's not that bad. It's only a light uh, hellish flame. It's like 104 <laughs> degrees in winter. Get away from me. <laughs> 104 degrees in winter? Okay, you so don't even you, know what you don't even know what 104 degrees is, you Canadian. Yes, I do. It's like 40 degrees Celsius. Okay, maybe you do know what 104 degrees is then. <laughs> no, actually, right now it's 72 because, dang it, if we're gonna do a <laughs> podcast, we're gonna talk about the weather in places where the listeners aren't because that's important. You're the one who invited a Canadian on. I did not. I. This is how you get. This you're, is how you're volu- You volunteered. Oh God, I did. You did. Uh, <laughs> Don't blame me for this. I get a Canadian. You talk about the weather. That's how it goes. I. I. <laughs> what do you think Americans talk about? <laughs> the weather. That's pretty much it. There, there's a lot of stereotypes I could get into right now. I am aware. There are a lot of people I, I could alienate. I am aware of most of them. Yes, and you are not. Welcome incorrect. to the bum. I'm I'm not doing this because it's causing problems. <laughs> ah! <laughs> All right, fine. We won't talk about the weather anymore. <laughs> let's let's get into more Q and A. We have a lot of questions for Lee. She is she's very popular. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we may not get to all of them. We're gonna do our best for this episode. But, uh, well, it depends on how long when did I go on for. So, well, yeah, um, we'll see. We'll see. I'll, I'll try to keep it more concise. That's okay. Actually, your some of your longer answers from the last episode were the most entertaining. So, <laughs> 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 all right, let's go ahead and jump in with this first question from Andrew D. What was it like pitching the Red Star Ring power up? Did you have trouble convincing anyone that it wasn't a super transformation for Nicole? Um, <laughs> I think the only feedback on it was really like, oh, this is really cool and no problem whatsoever. <laughs> that's how you that's how you skirt around it. <laughs> there you go. Short and concise. I appreciate that. But also no, it's kind of like, it's kind of funny. <laughs> like you, you literally no, like, <laughs> Go ahead. I don't know. Sometimes it, Sometimes there just be notes on the side of things, you know, change this, do this, this has to be more like this, more fight scenes, blah, 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 make this more clear, do this, blah, blah, blah. And then it was just like, oh, this is cool. Yeah. And it was like, oh. And nobody cared. <laughs> no. Always. Yeah, I, I always like how that happens. Like nobody yeah, noticed. So, you know, there's, there's, the, there's the things where you're so worried. It's like. Is this going to be okay? Am I going to have to set up a defense in my head about why it's not the same thing and why I have to argue for it and blah, blah, blah. No, it's cool. It's fine. No one cares. It's, not not that no one cares, but you know what I mean? Like, it's it's not an issue. It's a non-issue. It's, yeah, right. do it. Sounds great. Oh, 
Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> no one. Cool. Thanks. No <laughs> one thought, oh, that's a super transformation. Like, no one made that connection, I guess. Or at least nobody important. Well, I don't know. I guess it just, it, it's a computer power up. It's a technical mm. thing. Exactly. It's, it's not Chaos it's, Emeralds. It's not Chaos Emeralds. Yeah, that too. That's it all that have the words that's all that super meant. in front of it. So. Yep. Nope. It's, I, <laughs> it has overclocked in front of it instead, which is even better. It's better than super. Yeah. It's also, you know, I mean, I'm I'm not in charge of these decisions. I, I don't know what whims people might decide. Yeah, I don't know. It's not <laughs> up to me. It, it just kind of ends up like whoever is the one who actually approves it that day is the one who kind of decides. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's what it For is. all I know, it could have been someone else yeah. who might have been more uptight about it. Yeah, I think that's a, a lot of that's a, something that some people don't understand is that these these things these things that are referred to as mandates are a little bit more um, subjective and fluid than. I think people realize a lot of the time it's kind of at the whims of whoever's doing the approval. So yeah, th there, there have been times where it's kind of like, you know, I, I like, well, why is this, an, why is this an issue slash a problem now versus two issues ago? You didn't say anything. Well, you know what? I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to yeah, yeah, shut yeah. my mouth and move on with things. Yeah. Yeah. So do, 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 no one said anything or again, like, you know, like because of a previous experience, I'm sure someone's going to flag this as something. And again, I'm going to have to set up a counter argument again in my head in anticipation of why I want to keep this in the script. And no, no one says anything, but then they'll point at something else entirely that you thought was going to be fine. Right. And be like, nope, you can't do this. This character would never do this, even though they've been doing it for months. <laughs> yeah, I, sure. I, 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 yeah, it sounds it sounds frustrating. I get it. Yeah, this is something so, this is something you deal with on licensed books. So, yeah, I mean, ultimately, it's it's someone else's property, and you're you're basically playing with their toys. Essentially, yeah. So if they come along and say, no, Captain Jerkass doesn't have flying powers. <laughs> well, and you're saying, well, last week you picked him up and said he was going whoosh, whoosh through the air. And they said, shut up. He's mine. And that was last week. And I'm someone else completely different from the person you talked to last week who was making. Yeah, exactly. Making, I was wearing making a him hat. go whoosh, whoosh around. <laughs> that was my twin brother. Uh huh. Yep, exactly. I don't know. You don't know. No one knows. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Wow. So much for being short and concise. Well, you know what? It's more fun this way. Okay. <laughs> Let's move on to the next one, though. From PP Tori. I don't know why they're named PP Tori, but they're called PP Tori. Uh, when, why, how did you decide to become a writer? Is there any advice or recommendations for people who want to start writing? Hmm. That is an excellent question because I don't think I have a good answer for it. <laughs> I kind of feel like it, I don't, feel, okay. Give me a second here. Okay. No Cause problem. I feel like a lot of people are like, you know, Oh, I've always loved writing. I have a passion for writing. I've been writing stuff since I was a kid or I've always been coming up with stories or this or that. And in my case, I kind of feel like it was just, kind of something that just uh kind of boiled over <laughs> in terms of you know analyzing stories i guess or you know in terms of just like media consumption right and being really uptight and you know <laughs> looking at structures and plot points and plot holes and this that and the other you know i mean i've always i've always been a big reader that was kind of harder when I was younger because like I said, you know, I kind of grew up doing like French immersion in school. Right. And so my English knowledge was pretty terrible while I was learning French. And then I switched kind of back, you know, eventually to more English based focus and 
lost a lot of my French skills. <laughs> so for a while I was terrible with both, but I still read a lot, like a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think in terms of, you know, like, yeah, you're watching co cartoons, comics, movies, everything, video games even. But, you know, fall as a follower of this comic book series, especially, it was kind of something that just kind of came to the point of, if really just getting to the point of, why can't I do this? <laughs> was it I, if I were, in you know, here's here's what I keep looking at. I would do it this way. Right. Why can't I do? And then eventually it was, well, wait, why can't I do it? Mm hmm. If someone else, you know, like if this is considered an OK story to publish, then I would like to think I could maybe do something comparative. Right. Uh, it, and so. So oh, sorry, I was going to say, so essentially what you're saying is that you uh, decided to start writing basically out of you were saying, move out of the way. I can do this better. <laughs> Well, or, that, or here's that her, or here's move. I got this. I can do this. <laughs> that implies a level of arrogance that I don't think I had because I was terrified <laughs> I, and embarrassed. I, I, I know. I know. <laughs> like I said, I think part of it is a level of frustration. And I'm sure a lot of people. Right. Experience that when a story doesn't go the way. And I'm not necessarily saying that it's. I wasn't seeing the developments I wanted. I wasn't necessarily going, oh, you know, how come my personal pairing isn't canon? How come they're not doing what I want? It's just more just how come you're not doing anything with these characters? Right. How come they're spinning their wheels so much? How come they're not getting used? How come they're not showing any personality at all? How come these stories aren't concluding in a satisfying manner, in my opinion? <laughs> well, so I... They... <laughs> Or, or, you know, concluding it all, that would be helpful. <laughs> if, yeah, what, you know, so it just kind of was like, well, right. You know, there were, there, I had, you know, dabbled in doing some storytelling before, or mostly I would guess um, doing little silly kind of scripts or things, just not necessarily full stories, but just kind of uh, little no. segments or base, I guess to a degree, kind of like a, simple version of off panel <laughs> did a lot of i know it did a lot of uh, like a character design and character development stuff like yeah. that. yeah so so basically yeah so i guess off panel kind of worked as an early you know because ian sometimes would be coming up with ideas and i'd just be kind of like oh my gosh this is fun <laughs> let's tear apart everything and just mock the crap out of it and yeah, that's that's the best part of off panel <laughs> Yeah, and then that actually kind of turned into a thing. Was like, well, wait, why can't I do this? Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, I was already like doing some of the coloring and stuff, and it's like, hey, can I try writing some of this? Okay, well, let's see what you got. Uh, how about this? Yeah. Okay, that's great. Keep writing it. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, you know, spinning some story ideas back and forth. Well, can we try maybe doing? A script i guess maybe okay what would that look like and there were sometimes i tried you know some rough breakdown ideas or just you know talked some concepts out with the editors and stuff yeah and you know saw how it was done on a technical level which is a bit different from just you know i have ideas throw ideas out there right well it sounds but, like they were kind of they were pretty receptive to it though and you were that you'd because you'd sort of like proven yourself that you could do the you could do the work through like off panels I, and coloring I guess. and stuff. And so <laughs> I guess it kinda helped, you know, build up their trust in you, I suppose. Seems yeah, like I guess. Kinda, I mean seems like they kinda I mean I guess also, you know, in terms of a technical job mm -hmm. you know, hitting deadlines. Right. Probably <laughs> helped a lot. Um <laughs> Yeah, I think that's something people in comics really appreciate is actually being able to hit deadlines. It's, it's kind of a you know, the, it's kind of something a lot of people struggle with, which is interesting. I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not I'm <laughs> no, not no, gonna no. say like I work, you know, well with deadlines. I hate deadlines, but you know, there are a few times where it's like, Hey, um, you know, something happened. Is there any chance you could get this in by tomorrow morning? And it's like I hate everything. I hate everything right now in existence, but yes. Yeah. I will do this. And I will loathe every minute of it, but it will be done. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, yep, I know that. I know that feel. <laughs> so again, there's my very long-winded way of saying that, you know, I just kind of burst into writing because I was frustrated <laughs> with things. <laughs> And and you joined you you joined as Ian was writing, so you are frustrated with Ian. Yes, that's exactly what it was. No. Obviously, obviously. No, <laughs> no, no, no. I it, was, it was a I very long term thing, though. You know, yes. like I said, yes. looking at a lot of things, and it's like, well, I know, especially in terms of the Sonic book. You know, it's like I know the characters. I'm familiar with the cast. I'm familiar with the setting. Yep. I'm familiar with the history and the story history in universe. Mm -hmm. So. Why not? Because I think that was one thing overall is kind of like, if you look at maybe some cartoons, we'll just say. Sure. And, well, okay, we'll just say, you know, in a simple sense, well-developed cartoons. Mm hmm And in a season or two or three max, you can look at character arcs and say, hey, those are great character arcs. Mm -hmm. And then it was kind of like, well, okay, let's look at Sonic. What kind of character arcs have we had? And it's like, um, what has the main cast done in terms of character arcs? In terms of solid building arcs, what right. kind of interactions have they had with each other? What kind of dynamics are there? And it's like, it didn't feel like they had a lot. And you'd go, in my experience, reading from month to month, hoping kind of for crumbs of development or characterization or anything. And yep. sometimes it was just, hey! They showed up on three panels. <laughs> they got two lines of dialogue. <laughs> hey, we've acknowledged okay. this character's existence. Love us. <laughs> and it's like, you know, kind of sitting back going like, well, okay, so-and-so and so-and-so are supposed to be friends. What do they do together? Right. What, ex what examples do you have over the course of 50 issues of these people interacting? And it's like, you don't sometimes right. or oftentimes or, you know, again, it could depend on the characters, but it's just, it was frustrating. Mm -hmm. So that was a large part of it was basically just, I want to do something with this. Yeah. <sighs> That's so, a lot of, you know, like missed opportunities and stuff. That's a lot. I of, guess. I think that that's one of the things that really uh, kind of bugs me in like media and stuff too, is like missed opportunities and, things like that things that could things where like certain characters or certain story uh certain story potential. developments or whatever yeah the, the the potential lost is one of the things that really just gets me and i mean that's the thing too is like if you look at potential something could go you know in a million different directions but it can't necessarily do all those things at the same time correct you have to take a path you can't take all paths at once you can't split yourself horrifically mm -hmm. into eight directions <laughs> and, you know, octopath traveler kind of thing. <laughs> you, you know, you'll, you will have to, at some point say it's this or that, this is the path I'm going on. And yeah, so you are going to say it could be fun if this had happened, or this could have been interesting. It had the potential to be great development. It had the potential to be fun. An interesting look at the character in terms of this lens or that or whatnot but at some point you might just have to say well this is the one we chose because you can't do everything at once right and taking one path might close off another mm -hmm. but that's just the nature of storytelling right so there was uh, i think the second part of that was essentially uh what kind of advice or recommendation for people who want to start writing oh yeah yeah yep and I know there's a lot of people who probably would like to say, you know, practice a lot, you know, write a lot, blah, 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 blah. I know a lot of people often seem to say they have a lot of trouble with dialogue. Mm -hmm. um, I, I personally don't really see those issues. So I would say for myself, something I don't see say a lot is I just analyze the crap out of everything. You know, once you have your basic outline mm -hmm. of what you want to accomplish with your story in terms of, you know, if it's a character growth, if it's, you know, just an overall arc and goal started here, ends up here, finishes this, accomplishes this, stops this, prevents this, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, get your very broad arc down, 
figuring out your beats along the way and then continually break it down, break it down, break it down, break it down until you've got a very solid path before you. I'm not saying you have to have every single tiny nuanced bit planned out in advance, but have a good idea of where you're going. Because you have a bit on the flip side of, you know, you want to have some room because there might be things you did that didn't occur to you or things might change organically as you're developing your story. Right. And you might, you know, a new development <laughs> might present itself in a way or develop gradually or organically as you're going. And hey, this might be a better path or this hadn't occurred to me. Let's try this set. This is going to work great. But if you don't have an idea of where you're going, then your pacing can suffer. Your foreshadowing will likely be non-existent or meaningless if you try to plant it and then don't have any payoff for it. You'll probably just be floundering around. It's just, it's not satisfying. Right. It doesn't have to be formulaic. You can still have stories sometimes that are just, you know, I want to ex experience this small bit of whatever mm -hmm. just for its own sake. But still, like, think of it ahead of time. Think of it again. Think of it some more. Think of it from different angles. Question everything that's going on in it. Why is this happening? Why isn't this happening? Why are these other alternatives not being explored? So you try to cover any plot holes in advance. Try to have good reasoning for what's going on. You know, there are in-universe human errors, and then there are stupid mistakes that make no sense in any context <laughs> that, you know, ruin the plot. Right. So my point was just, I yeah, know. I mean, I know it sounds really obsessive and all this, but really just think your story through. <laughs> That's another thing. I, f I feel like there's a lot, there are a lot of stories out there where, especially nowadays where it feels like you try to kind of excuse plot holes or unsatisfying story developments um, just, you know, for the sake of maybe the spectacle or mm -hmm. just because you can't be bothered Oh, to, yeah. yeah, there's a lot of that. <laughs> you know, I, I, I want to reach this point in the story. I need to hit this conclusion. And I'm going to cram this square peg into the round hole to get there. Yep, yep, yep. I'm going to get the rubber mallet, and I'm going to hit it, and I'm going to maybe pull out the sledgehammer for one last hit and hope <laughs> no one really notices, because <laughs> look over here, fireworks! woo mm -hmm. And... Sometimes that's okay. You know, sometimes you just want to turn off your brain and look at the pretty colors. Look at the pretty explosions. Sure. Sometimes yep. it's, you know, it's, ooh, it's flashy and artistic. And you know what? I don't care. <laughs> but ultimately, you probably do want to care. <laughs> and if it's a comic book story where you're going to have lots of continuity and it's probably going to matter in the long run, then please care. Please, for the love of God, care. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitely a lot of times where it's like, uh, you clearly don't care anymore, do you? And it's like, oh, I can tell. It feels like uh, you're just kind of doing this by the numbers, not really, not really paying attention to what you're doing, just doing whatever, just cramming things in there for the sake of it. Yeah, it's, eh. Yeah. Oh, completely unsatisfying or you know even if you like and i know sometimes it's hard to keep track of everything you do you know i'm sure everyone at some point has even just you know you walk into a room look around and say why am i in here what was i doing yeah so it's it's possible and i'm sure just about every writer has gotten to the point somewhere where they've forgotten something they themselves have written oh for sure like you make you can make mistakes it happens yeah but you know, if you start establishing major plot points or major character traits mm -hmm. only to not even forget them, but massively contradict them right. down the line. Right. Just, you know, do some planning. Mm -hmm. Do some planning. Do lots of planning. You're not in a rush. Think before you go. <laughs> <laughs> think and think and think and think. Think of all the angles. Think around the corners, think upside down, think while the cat's attacking your feet. I don't know. 
<laughs> Wait, is that actually happening right now? Not right now. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Not right this second. <laughs> but soon and earlier. <laughs> you never know. Uh, he did He did <laughs> slap me directly in the eyeball in the middle of the night. Neat. A few days ago, a few nights ago. But mm, neat. I, I don't, you know, it wasn't. It wasn't deliberate. They're uh, just stupid, stupid sure, animals. Sure, it wasn't deliberate. Cat's trying to kill you. Well, bigger and more fanged animals have tried, so. <laughs> and failed, apparently. <laughs> cough, cough. All right, all right. Look. <laughs> all right, all right. We ready? Say, do, you want, do you want to start going into how many animals I've survived? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's okay. We can move on to the next question. <laughs> you know, going going into school in grade three and having my teacher in French say, Oh my god, were you in a car accident? Oh Well, I've been kicked by a horse and thrown off of a horse, so there's oh, I've that. been thrown off of a horse and dragged by a horse. Yeah, yeah. Jeez, I don't even remember if I was dragged by the horse or not, but I was definitely thrown off of it and kicked. <laughs> So yeah, I, I, yeah, animals killing us. It's it's a thing. It's a thing. It's a thing. Yeah, yeah. Hundred and fifty pound dog ran over my face. Ooh, that's <laughs> a big dog. Leon Burger, look it up. They're amazing. Oh, yeah, I am. I'm sure, but man, that is a massive it's, dog. It's, it's not a bear, but it might as well be. <laughs> Okay, uh, so right. yeah. we, we had a topic here, didn't we? Yeah, I, I suppose. We got more questions. Let's move on uh, to the next one. It never ends. <laughs> I mean, it, it does, but I mean, we're taking a while to get there. <laughs> the next question comes from Makalosa M. What, cool name. I, yeah. <laughs> I threw you off so you, bad. Okay. You, you did. And I'm also, <laughs> throw, I'm also thrown off because this, the grammar on this question isn't great, but that's okay. I guess that grammar is correct, and I'm just dumb. <laughs> Sorry, Magalosa. Uh, what have been the greatest challenges when writing slash creating for the Archie Sonic book? And what story that you've been involved in has been the most fun? Hmm. Um, greatest challenges. Okay. So an easy and non-precise answer would be basically... Anytime, I guess, you know, you end up kind of creatively butting heads with anyone else is a, a great, bit tough sometimes. Challenging, yeah. Because I, there are a lot of factors going into it. It's not just, you know, storytelling or visual or, or anything. There's also multi-levels of marketing going into this, you know, down to how our covers presented, even for mm -hmm. a story right how is the pitch going to be presented what characters are involved in the story to make it look appealing to the licensor and this and that and the other kind of thing so there's a lot of degrees and steps if you're just sitting there thinking here's my vision it's going i like it this way you are not going to get far you are going to be going through an obstacle course of other people who also have their vision of things right. and have those visions for various different reasons with different goals in mind. Sometimes it is a matter of preference and sometimes it is just flat out. I don't think this is the best way to get attention or make money, which is annoying because you're like, I don't care. Here is my grand artistic vision. Hmm. And I don't care about your plebeian dollars. <laughs> but ultimately, that... The, yeah, ultimately, that is ultimately what matters. Ultimately, but, it is what what the point know, is. But, but here's, yeah. my, here's my magnum opus. And I don't care how much of your blue cartoon character needs to take up of a... <laughs> You know, he needs to take a certain percentage of the cover art here. Right. But in my eyes, that misrepresents the deep hubris of 
the story. I don't know. You know, it's <laughs> there's that angle. It's just it's a lot to go through, and a lot of people tie their egos for various reasons into their creative processes and the things they create. <laughs> That's not necessarily a good or bad thing, depending on how far it goes. Right. It is a personal thing because it is something you've created and put a lot of effort into. Yeah. But it can get a little intense sometimes and hard to work around. So there's that factor. Sure. On a more technical level, um, page count. <laughs> page count was my nemesis. It's a very limiting factor. Very limiting because obviously it is a hard limit. Yep. Um, I want to say even if the book, which I think some people don't necessarily pay attention to or know, I shouldn't say pay attention to, but are aware of, is if a book, you know, ships or whatever and says, this is a, we'll just say, you know, 35 page comic book. You are paying X amount of dollars for a 35 page comic book. But what goes into its development is how many pages are actually allotted for the story. Right. Versus how many are for editorial features, extra features, um, declarations for licensing or other technical legal jargon. And ads. then ads. Yeah. The exactly. Big one. The big one. And the ads can also be a big fact. Cause sometimes you just be like, Oh, you don't even notice the ads. You just, yep. Here's two pages of ads, skip over them. Never even registered in my head. Sure. My point being was that, you know, some of the older Sonic issues would have two medium sized stories and then a smaller backup. You'd get like three stories per issue. Mm -hmm. Or some of them would be divided up with, I think two 11 page stories. When I was on the book, stories were a flat 20 pages or in some cases, 10 and 10. There might have been some, I'm not sure if there were five page backups at that point. Point being, though, <laughs> there were only ever 20 pages to work with. Right. So sometimes when I would get handed, it's, you know, here's the 20 pages, here's the 10 pages. In one case, here's seven pages. <laughs> and it's like, okay, how do you balance this? And after you rip out some of your hair and kick some holes in the wall and, I don't know, chew up the drywall and... You didn't need that. S scare the birds out of the trees and everything, you know. Freak the, once, once you, freak the cats out. <laughs> yeah. Once you find your hacky place and you have an outline that works mm -hmm. and you think it's perfect... You get to the script portion, you realize it's not perfect, and you don't have enough room, and you can't possibly fit everything that needs to happen in here. There's not enough room for the dialogue. There's not enough room to cover everything you want to say. There's no room for the action sequence that needs to be in there. Or you really had this really cool fight scene, but it would look really much better if you had a big, big, big panel for it, but you don't have room for a big, big panel, or you can't have a splash page there because you already used a splash page somewhere else, and that's just extraneous. And then you fling the laptop across the room. No, that never happened. You can't prove anything. <laughs> Might explain why it's broken. No, it's because I spilled acetone on it. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, also, and it just hates me. But, um, <laughs> you know, there's that. Or then, like, you know, you have your lovely breakdowns that are broken down perfectly for your 20 pages. Oh, only. I thought you meant some turns other out, I thought you meant some other kind of breakdown. <laughs> Yeah, then you have your mental breakdown on top of that. Yeah, there we but, go, there we go. But then you look at them after and realize that neither you or the editor noticed that you have, like, page, you know, 16 written in there twice. And you actually only have 19 pages of content instead of 20. Mm -hmm. And now the whole thing's off completely. Oh, crap. And, you know, you're like, well, now I struggled so much to fit my story into what I thought was 20 pages, but I actually have 19 pages of content and I need to figure out where I can expand things. And there's three different areas that I would love to expand after having crammed them back into my limited space. And 
(laughs) (laughs) So, yeah, basically working with the page constraints is frustrating. And it's workable. It's doable. It's just it. It's a bit of mental Tetris. Right. And, you know, you, you sometimes have to make sacrifices in terms of what did you want to have in the story? What are your priorities in the story? What has to be accomplished? Sure. Be it if that's something you really wanted in there, what editorial really wants in there, what higher ups really want in there, you know, for whatever reason. Because, again, it's not always just up to you. And how to make it all work and fit nicely and keep the pacing somewhat proper <laughs> to the best of your ability. Um, and again, it's not necessarily to that more space is always better. Um, the seven page story for the God, Sonic Worlds Unite battle The book, battle the books? Book. Oh, yeah, yeah, the battle book. Yep. However, the long title went. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've only ever seen a physical copy of that thing twice. It's a bit of a mouthful. But yeah, the, so those were seven pages. And at least they're like, you know, the promise is fairly simple. It was, it wasn't too hard, you know? So it wasn't a ton that had to go. It mostly focused on two characters. Right. Again, it's, you know, what do you have to accomplish in the time you have to accomplish it? So, you know, it's not necessarily that less is worse. It's how you use it. Exactly. But sometimes it's so frustrating. <laughs> oh, my God. I had so many oh. times. And then, like I said, um, you know, I had a couple times where I kind of turned around and it's like, hey, uh, th- that that's not the dialogue I wrote. And it's like, well, someone yeah. else trimmed it down or reworded it in yeah. a way because they thought it would fit a word balloon better. And it's like, well, it's it's kind of missing a crucial point there. Oh, yeah. Well, we'll put it back in. <laughs> curse you editors okay. curse you i didn't say it was editors i didn't say anything oh okay <laughs> shut up <laughs> i didn't say anything hey, 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 hey yeah it's it's me don't blame lee blame me i always blame you okay good okay, it's good. your fault uh, i mean i, I know <laughs> so <laughs> anyway and then um, so I guess that, I don't know, I guess that kind of covers a lot of that. And then I feel like I kind of had this sort of answer before, but saying, what was it like something that was fun? Most fun. To be involved with? M- most, fu- most fun story you've been involved with. <laughs> uh, there was that fun, fun story that I wrote and it never got published. How dare they? That was great. That was awesome. That was a delight. <sighs> it never saw the light of day. Woo! Yay. Perfect. It, it had a cute cover. Oh. <laughs> that, one, that, that one by Jen Hernandez. Uh, everything so. by Jen Hernandez is cute, though. I know. I think we said that last time. Yeah, I know. But it's, it's a thing. It's not any less true. I think it's got a bit where it's like Sally has some kind of horrible food on a tray and Mighty's <laughs> eating it no problem. Uh, oh, Mighty. Uh, I... I you know, I don't even, I mean, I, I assume the story didn't actually get to anyone to pencil because, you know, we did see some of the stories that were penciled that didn't get published. And I guess that didn't happen or mm-hmm. whatever, because if if there were any error pages done or started or anything, I never saw anything or heard anything of it. But, I don't, you know, sometimes, <laughs> I mean, there there were a couple times where it was like, oh. You know, so and so artist will be the one doing this story. Oh, okay, cool. I should get in contact with them so you know we can go over any details if needed when the story is actually happening. Sure. Oh no, actually, someone else did it in the end. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, as far as I know, it didn't get penciled, oh. which is too bad because I think it would have been fun. Mm-hmm. All righty. Oh, wow. <laughs> Let's move on to the next question, which I believe we covered before. I think it was the last time you were on. The first time you were on, we covered this okay. one. But whatever, we'll, we'll touch on it again. For Why not? 
This one's from Captain AWF. Was there ever planned to be a cure for Cassia's illness? And what was going to be the ultimate fate of the Deer Sisters? Yeah, I think we did kind of cover. We did. But that. go maybe just cover it, go over it again real quick. Review real quick. Sure. Real quick or in more detail? What should I do? Quick. Quick. <laughs> yes. Um, I wasn't going to be horrible like everyone seemed to assume and murder one of them. Mm-hmm. I actually was not going to do that. I mean, it could have happened, but it didn't. I don't know. Like, I, I've kind of said, I kind of feel like it's Sonic the Hedgehog. I feel like there should always be some sense of hope. That would have been pretty, pretty dang dark to go that route. Yeah, and I, I mean, sometimes dark is kind of fun or interesting. Yeah, but that that seems like a little on the extreme end. Yeah, and like I said, I kind of, I kind of feel like these stories should ultimately, mm-hmm. ultimately give you some sense of hope. Right. So. You know, there there would have been a low spot for them. They would have been apart for a while. It would have been a very low point for Clove because she would have thought she had lost everything. And while they wouldn't necessarily reconcile immediately, that Cassio would eventually find something to uh, help with her illness and, you know, basically find a way to live comfortably and Clove would find a new purpose in life and way to care for the people under her command. And they, they would at least know that the other was safe and doing well for a while. And then I would like to think down the road, be able to, you know, fully reconcile. Mm -hmm. So if that, helps (laughs) helps <laughs> if that if, if that if that sure that's good there there's some stuff that kind of crosses into um some of ian's plans for other characters and i don't want this that's why i'm kind of like going over dodging some details here because you know th- these stories don't happen in a vacuum it's not here are these characters over to the side their story is happening in a complete bubble away from everything else they affect each other. They affect other stories. They kind of go all together. So they would have been um, tied to and affected by uh, a bunch of other plot lines. Right. Overall. So I don't want to just kind of go through and just be like, <laughs> yeah, and here's where all of this would have come to a head. <laughs> for more de- for more details, tune into Lost Hedgehog Tales happening eventually. Calm down. Just wait. Wouldn't that be nice? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, talking about your plans is not allowed unless... Yeah, okay. (laughs) Let's not get too... (laughs) Let's not get too into that. I didn't say anything. Let's not get too... Let's not get into the weeds on that. Let's move on. (laughs) What weeds? I said nothing. Okay. Nothing at all. All right. Here's a question from the Imagine Breaker one two one two one two. One two one two one two. One two one two one two. I've been doing research on Sonic and relations to Greek and some math in the games. Sonic versus Chaos is the hero archetype versus the serpentine creature. Archie Comics Eggman uh, relates chaos energy that Sonic uses as something beyond quantum measures that leaps into chaos theory. And in the Ix's arc, chaos energy is referred to as being related to chaotic forces making up everything. Chaos from Greek, basically. Essentially being the embodiment of chaos is some grand order. Grand order. Was there some plan on using Sonic for a major event? Goodness. <laughs> I, 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 not 100% entirely um, clear on the exact question here, but... <laughs> well, okay, if you're coming down to just the basis of... The- yeah. Was there some plan on using Sonic for a major event? I would I would kind of assume that in most of the stories that should be the case anyway. The hero doesn't always have to be the main catalyst in everything, but you know, to a point he he kind of should be. The series is named Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> yeah, right. And when 
he or you know the other lead characters don't have any agency or don't factor into any of the major events you know not saying they have to be these singular catalysts but even if they you know aren't involved because there's you know some mystical figure or some old man watching on a tv screen somewhere to handle everything from afar while they're oblivious Mm -hmm. then okay then who cares about the main hero (laughs) <laughs> what have what have they accomplished? So I mean, Sonic Sonic is involved in most of the major events, right? He he should be a driving force, not even necessarily in a proactive sense, but in a reactive sense at least. Mm-hmm. He sees something wrong, he'll want to fix it. Um, in terms of embodying chaos energy, that seems to come up within the series in a lot of different ways. And means a lot of different things depending on the iteration. So yeah, it's not very consistent. That one's kind of hard. I mean, the movie seemed to even kind of take that angle with it. It's not just like electric powers; it's some kind of weird chaos energy powers, right? So it's a little vague in that sense. But <laughs> I don't know if there's necessarily you know some grand order behind it. But Sonic is generally a factor. <laughs> <laughs> Sonic's got the speed force. No, he doesn't. Please, no. Okay, no. So- Sonic. <laughs> when Sonic can just do whatever the plot requires because speed, it just stop. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. It's not even the physicality of his ability <laughs> or anymore. It's just, it's just. Goes fast, fixes the plot. Perfect. Sounds good. Cut, print, yep. we're done. Very easy. <laughs> all, all, all that stuff I said about thinking about your story, then thinking about it again, and then thinking about it some more. Just throw it all out. It. Yeah, just throw it Forget all out. Get it. Who cares? Blue head. Vibrate through the walls, and then through reality, and then through the other reality, <laughs> and then back through time, yep. and stop the dam from collapsing, and save Lois Lane. And Blue Hedgehog <laughs> goes fast. I'm going to stop now. Okay. <laughs> Fix the Great Wall with your... No, okay. okay. Anyway. <laughs> Fix the Great Wall by playing the footage in reverse. <laughs> I said we're stopping. We're stopping. <laughs> You're stopping now, Kyle. I, I'm not... Are we? Are we done? Do you... Moving on. Okay, we're moving on. All right, all right, all right. Let's read this read this giant block of text of a question is what I'm going to do. From My Digama. Sock fell off. Your what? My sock fell off. Oh. <laughs> you didn't you don't need a sock. What are you what are you socking for? No socks needed. My feet are cold. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, put the sock back on. I'm trying. While go I, on. Well, I read this question. Here we go. Go for it. This one's from Digama. That's A Alia. I could hey. be hey, I could be completely misremembering the premise behind this question, but <laughs> <laughs> I can vaguely remember Ian once complaining on the Bumble King forums about how sometimes the rare instances of Archie that weren't written by him and would often still have him listed as writer on solicits writer on solicits. And I have an even fuzzier, unsure if it's legit or misremembered memory of something else. Of you following that up with mentioning that there's a few off panels miscredited to you since you wrote a bulk of the reboot era off panels. And that definitely has me interested. I think the only off panels panels credited to you that make me go, hmm, maybe someone else wrote them are the off panels for 261 and 262 in the middle of Waves of Change. Uh, off panels were done in batches of four with the same art team and writer within a batch with the main book batches and the universe batches often, but not always with the same teams for 261 through 264's batch and the great chaos caper on universe equivalence batch. Uh, you were only credited, uh, as writer on 261, 262, 263, 264, and all four of the <laughs> universe batch have Ian as writer, notably his only reboot era off panels other than 252's. Now, while you and Ian are the duo to where it would make the most sense for you to co-write a batch together, 
my possible my possibly misremembering misremembered memory of you mentioning some miscredited off panels made me go hmm at those two. <laughs> okay, you're done. Yeah, I am. I am done. Yes, the Carnival Night Zone music can be can be you can end um, now. The barrel has been moved. You finally figured oh, out oh, how oh, to oh, move oh, it No, up no, 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 no. Wait, I, I, I just, <laughs> I got. Oh, okay, no, no, no. I think I actually know what this is about. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Um. <laughs> oh, geez. Okay. Um. So, okay. First off, yes. Off panels were generally done as four part sets. Right. So, yeah, there'd be, because especially, you know, post like reboot, they started wanting to do arcs kind of in batches of four to fit the trades nicely. But also, it just, it just made it easier for production to do, you know, to have the artist do the set like that and so on and so forth. But, um, <sighs> Okay, so the Waves of Change ones, there was, I'm 99% sure of this, there was one where I feel like I ended up doing one of the four, and that was because it was some, I feel like, okay, maybe I'm, maybe I'm a little off on this, but I think it was like maybe there was something like a deadline, and Ian had like three of the four done, and was just like, you know, crap, where am I going with this? Mm -hmm. I need one more. <laughs> and I was just like, ooh, ooh, let me do it, you know, kind of thing. Here's something, here's something quick, you know. I think I, we might have even had, like, the editor on the phone at the time. I don't even remember. Yeah. There were probably lots of calls with me yelling at things in the background. But, um, <laughs> well, you know, it's just something. I mean, like, me, me and uh, Vin Lavella have the same birthday. So, obviously, we, we have, like, a mind meld thing going on. Oh, Okay. Except not. But I, anyway. I, I, I know, obviously, but yes. Okay. But, uh, you know, so I think I think that one in particular was, it basically turned into, I just provided the fourth or one or something that happened or because of a time crunch. But then there was one that was credited to me that I didn't actually do. And I think that ended up causing some confusion anyway with the way, because like, again, they're all supposed to, like, you know, they're considered one set. Right. So suddenly having like them try to divide it up was kind of weird. <laughs> and it shouldn't have been done like that. Technically, I guess someone got mixed up somewhere. So there's there's like one credited to me says I wrote it when I didn't. And then during I think World Unite, I think I don't know what happened there aside from <laughs> Never mind that we were crossing over four books. Yeah. At once. And, um, yeah, okay. Like, I may, I, I know I did a lot of the uh, off panels after the reboot point, but there was also, um, oh gosh, what, Eric es Esquivel? I think his last name is. I'm very sorry. Esquivel? Es Esquivel, maybe? That's how, uh, that's usually how I've heard it pronounced. I don't remember. I'm sorry. <laughs> I've never met him, so I, I don't really know. Um, and then Bill Freeberger, who was uh, um, a writer for, I think, producer for um, Sonic Boom, did a few, mostly mm -hmm. involving the Sonic Boom properties. Mm -hmm. And John Gray did a bunch here and there. And when they did the um, crossover, I don't know what happened. But they're all over the place. I don't even know if they were all exactly in the sets because I seem to remember just getting some individually and being like, this needs to be colored really fast, like now. And it's like, okay, okay, I'm rushing. Oh, God, what's happening? <laughs> I don't even know what this is about because I have no context for it. But sure. And then... When, and, and, you know, I didn't even know what issue some of these would be in because it could be in any section of the crossover. And in the end, I think there are several of them that say I colored them when I didn't. Mm. I don't know if there are any that I did color that say someone else did. <laughs> but it's a little awkward. Yeah. Because the, I don't know what happened there. It's just... 
the whole the whole crossover was a interesting experience. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so there there's a bunch of those that say I colored them. I did in fact color some. There are some that say I colored them and I didn't. There might be some that said I that I did color that say someone else did it. I'm not sure. <laughs> and then on top of that, there were. Um, a few times where the official solicits came out mm -hmm. and on stories that I did in fact write, like not just, you know, actual stories, not just off panel. And my name was never mentioned. Yeah. Yeah. In the credits at all. So, you know, I know that, that kind of hurts a little. And you don't mean, <laughs> and you, you don't mean just for the crossover, right? You mean just in general? No, in general. Right. Yeah. Cause I know waves of change, waves of change is like, your name's not on the cover of the co the collection. Well, they also like you know because like for the like inkers that. and colors and stuff, they basically only counted the. Uh, I know. The uh, lead stories, too, but also I suppose yeah, but still. but also too like the previews would uh, or the solicits would come out and they would just be, like you know, by Ian Flynn and it's like, no, right, no, yeah, uh, okay, thanks, fine, whatever, but um, I know, yeah, there's a lot of that. No, I just, I don't know why that kept happening <laughs> for some reason. Or even like, you know, yeah, there were some things that we, like some scripts we did together or things where I kind of, you know, some primary work, even though it was like a dual effort. Mm -hmm. But there were also, you know, stories I wrote 100% on my own and, you know, didn't get credit on them officially. And I know sometimes it's, um, I'm not saying this is what happened in these cases, but in other cases, there are... Um, there are um, like automated systems, you know, for like certain like bookstores or online services and things. And a lot of them aren't necessarily built for comic books. Some yeah. of them are built for books or even, you know, individual um, uh, graphic novel series. And a lot of those will assume that there is a singular writer or artist or writer slash artist behind them. Correct. Yeah. So, you know, sometimes it's just someone filling in a system. They just need an entry for, you know, tags or searches or whatever. They don't know necessarily there's been multiple per people on a series or whatever. They just they just need something to fill in the tag right? when it comes up under searches. So, yeah, they'll probably look online and be like, oh, this Ian Flynn guy has been writing for the past decade. I guess he's the writer, <laughs> so, you know, so they'll pop his name in. That yeah. doesn't necessarily mean Ian stole everybody's credit. <laughs> Or just auto populates with his name because he's the author of the series. So yeah, or like, yeah. or like, yeah, or it comes up under search as you know that's the first hit they got. Right. You know. Yep. Tracy Yardley's the only artist ever. It's that's not the case. That's just that's just computers. Yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's not personal. I can't say much for the solicits, but in those other cases, it was, you know. Right. Now I am a little disappointed that you know the. Uh, the graphic novels got canceled right before I would have gotten one with my actual name on the cover. Yeah, I know. That I, would have been really cool. I was really annoyed by that. I was really looking Aww. forward to I was looking forward to having a Thank you for to being having the Spark of Life for... collection. <laughs> collected Spark of Life. And I was like, come on, come out. <laughs> and uh, it never did. Then I could have had like a whole book and then I could have been like, look, this is this is how I wanted this part to go. Except it didn't go like this. And this is where I wrote way too much friggin' dialogue. And then it got cut down and I didn't know about it. And you'll be like, okay, I just want to look at the pretty pictures. Please shut up. Actually, I would love to sit down with those issues and <laughs> go Oh my over, god. It, go no, over no, what, no. What you wanted. What what I just realized <laughs> ew, they might have put some of like my concept doodles and things in there if it had actually gone to print. <laughs> oh god, no. <laughs> Uh oh. Oh dear God, no, 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 no. Ew. Oh. Probably, oh God. Okay. Bless you in disguise. Probably fine. Nobody would have been like, oh no, she's terrible. No. They it already would, it been did that fine. though. There was all kinds of things they printed that I met I like never meant like anyone other than the editor to see. I know. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go on to the uh, next question from Almiron R. Aaliyah, oh, <laughs> Aaliyah, if you're going to work for IDW Sonic, tell me. 
which ideas do you have in mind for world building and do you have any character ideas Ooh, okay um i don't currently have plans for a working for idw b world building or character okay because a as i have said before you know i was looking at um working with idw and i said you know talking with the editors and stuff and then my health fell completely apart and that became impossible so i didn't but while that's looking more possible at this point you know it's still kind of touch and go yeah um so so still still not sure about that kind of thing i still think maybe down the line i might like to maybe apply as a colorist i don't We'll we'll see. This is very if. Right. Um, world building and character ideas, I don't have a lot because that sort of depends on the context of what is going on and what's happening in the comic as is. And it's a very different structure from what Archie had going on. Mm-hmm. But also, um, I think of a way to put this delicately, but I'm sure people will kind of get what I mean. Okay. The the way certain things are allowed to develop is very different now. Right. So, um, it's it's kind of hard to say what would be, I guess, permissible, and in what ways a story could develop without being more directly involved. So I wouldn't want to necessarily devote a whole lot of time to, ooh, here's what I would do with the story, knowing that it is very likely possible that it would not be allowed within the structure. Yeah. Basically, you know, say it has certain priorities and views of the characters and their world now. Yeah, certain guidelines that they want. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, even before, like, with some of the Sonic Universe, um, like, with the the last story I did there, with the Chaotix, there were certain things I was able to kind of skate around. Sure. And, you know, there were still notes on, this character can't do this or shouldn't do this or change it like this or blah, blah, blah. But there are things now that I don't think... I would have been able to do and some of it would be you know minor oh then i have to change that i can't do the other things well that kind of undercuts the entire story right here Mm -hmm. you know this entire arc for this character can't happen because of this or that so sure i i don't really like putting thought into things that I don't know if I can really use, I guess. <laughs> that makes sense. Um, so I would, you know, I kind of figured more as like, if it came down to actually had the opportunity, then I would probably do more active brainstorming. Mm-hmm. But as is, I'm not going to be like, oh yeah, I am totally going to, you know, throw in this whole society of this and that, these characters and, you know, have... Right. I don't know, Blaze go on this particular adventure and do this in her world when it's like, well, you can't. Too bad. Right. Yeah. It's it's, it's once again knowing how knowing the production of these things and how they work. It's like you know that it's not yeah. necessarily worth the time to put in thought about it because you know that it's the way the production works is just may not even fit. Yeah. What you and have I mean, in mind I, may not fit at all. Yeah, and I mean, I only know to a point. I don't know everything because I have on it direct, but... No, but I, I know you have... But what uh, I know to a point is, you know... <laughs> and, al- and also, you you know just in general how the production works, so you don't... Yeah. You, not, it doesn't, it's not necessarily anything specific. You just know that it's like, well, okay, maybe you like, have maybe you have some little ideas here and there, but nothing like... <laughs> nothing you've got developed or anything. Things yeah. like that. Yeah. No, I get it. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I I, I don't really, I don't really sit on ideas for long periods, hoping I can 
reuse or reapply them mm -hmm. forever. I, you know, if I can't use them, fine. I'll come up with something else when I need to. <laughs> you All know, right. it's, it's not that big a deal for me, I think. Yeah. All right. Our next question is from Mito Meta. I think you've pretty much already answered this one. It says, Lee, are you going to write any stories for IDW Sonic like you did for Archie? I really like your work. Oh, thank you. Um, I mean, I guess I just kind of answered that one. You, we really did just answer it, but I know I just wanted to make but, sure it yeah. got in here. <laughs> well, thank you for the compliment, though. That's really nice to hear. All right. But yeah, I, yeah. I mean, there's there's no active plans right now. All right. If, if they want to, if they want to do something <laughs> like off panel, and I can just make fun of everything, <laughs> I'm down for that. <laughs> I think there's a question about that in here as well, but we'll get to that eventually. Oh, okay. Uh, here's one from Blue Title Gamer. What are your favorite movies? I... <laughs> ah, shoot. Uh-oh. You, for you forget your favorite movies already? I don't... No. I don't really have... What's a favorite movie? Um... <laughs> it's a movie you really like and may have Shut watched up. multiple times. I thought... Uh... I'm sitting there going like, well, there's lots of like action movies. I've watched crap explodes and people do stupid things that make no sense that I've enjoyed. And it's like, well, which ones are those? Uh, <laughs> uh. God, when I was a kid, my brother and I watched Terminator 2 so much that the rental place just gave us the tape. <laughs> Eventually. You just rented it over and over and over so much. They're like, all right, yeah. fine. You might, you might as well just own it because you have yeah. it all the time. <laughs> It was a great, it was a really nice place. Like, it was literally in the ad of another store. Nice. And on our birthdays, they always gave us, like, free video game rental stuff. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. I remember those places. Yeah. It was awesome. But, um, but yeah, it was just like, man, you guys really like this movie. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Here you go. You know? Just, just take it. <laughs> just very good. So, yes. It is a but, good movie. Um, oh. I like, um... I've enjoyed uh, Scott Pilgrim versus the world a lot. Well, who would have guessed? <laughs> I, I know, Hopefully I know a lot me. of people were, I know a lot of people were kind of like uh, divisive on Michael Sarah in it. Yeah, and his portrayal of the character in this and that. But like beyond that, um, <laughs> I like a lot of the comedic staging and timing of the whole thing. Just that kind of semi surrealist humor. Yeah, you know, it's it, just it's cute. It's cute, and obviously all the video game references are fun. And it resulted um, in a really awesome, very fun video game in and of itself. That yeah, that really. Sadly, you can no longer buy, but it's a brilliant <sighs> game. I hate that. And I yeah, know. on top of that, so it's like not only do we get a game that takes place in my city, yeah. but a movie that takes place in my city that actually acknowledges that it takes place in my city <laughs> and, a graphic, and not in a whole graphic. my city pretending to be some other city you know and a whole that, graphic novel that takes place in your city that acknowledges I know that it too, your city. Yeah, yeah. Well, so i mean it's all this it's this whole franchise that takes place in your city i mean like it's you know because i mean they, they film so many things here though it's right like, yes they do i mean god we you know we're wandering around like literally wandering around and walked accidentally onto movie sets yeah we actually had some of uh the archie people up here i think once and uh we were just walking down the street and it's like what on earth is this like burnt out car on the side of the road <laughs> and uh they were filming suicide squad oh yeah i think you told me that which is terrible but <laughs> okay, well you know can't win them all but you know we were, we were just walking around and it's like <laughs> What what is this car doing here? And, <laughs> oh, hey, you know. But um, it's like T Toronto and Vancouver, the two most common cities in that aren't in, that aren't in themselves. movies, but aren't never themselves are never named. There was this really <laughs> really horrible movie my friend and I watched years ago. It was like some budget horror movie, I guess. Um, I don't even remember what it was called. I think there's... I just remember it. I think yeah, I know. Budget horror movie does not narrow it down. I think there's been like a few Uwe Boll, Uwe Boll movies filmed in like Toronto and stuff. And it's like really no, obviously Toronto. And it's like, ah, crap. Get out of here. <laughs> well, well, here's the thing. So throughout the movie, they kept talking like because like everything about it was terrible. Everything. 
the plot, the script, the, you know, it was all awful. But throughout the script, they kept talking about, you know, this taking place in small town America. This is just a small American town. You know, nothing much happens here. It's just a small American town. Sure. And, you know, it was very much an informed plot point Mm -hmm. that this is small town America because they're (laughs) driving down University Avenue, which is like one of the biggest streets in the city, (laughs) right by Roy Thompson Hall, which is a very big, shiny landmark. Uh And it's like, this doesn't look like small town anything. I'm pretty sure a Canadian flag was even visible in the background at one point. It's just like <laughs> This is this is the stand in for New York. What are you doing calling it small town America? I uh, like, whatever. Like, you know, you want me to believe this is like what, a town of two thousand people with like skyscrapers that you can't even see the top of? <laughs> okay. They all sure. live they all live in a skyscraper. <laughs> yeah. In yeah. the one skyscraper. Yeah. It's of course. <laughs> Mega it's City very, One. <laughs> it's a very vertical, uh-huh. small town America. Uh-huh. Tall, tall town America. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> it's my new genre. It's mine. I own it. Shut up. Can't have it. Can't have it. <laughs> Copyright me right now. Okay. Um. Oh gosh. Yeah. <laughs> and um. Oh god. What is it called? We're, we're um, getting off track here. Favorite. I know. I know. I know. Movies. But it just reminded me. What was? Uh, shoot, what was the movie? Short Circuit 2. Oh. Is when that, I was a kid. Is that I was filmed so, in Toronto? Yes, and I was okay. so mad because he goes into the world's biggest bookstore, which sadly doesn't exist anymore because we needed another condo there. Of course. But, you know, and they're doing, like, the whole, like, what, Pledge of Allegiance or whatever at the end, and it's like... <laughs> it's like you're, near, you're out in front of the Eaton Center, you you're in the world's biggest bookstore. You're in downtown Toronto. Just stop. <laughs> You're desecrating this holy land. What are you doing? Yes. Yes, exactly. <laughs> the world's biggest bookstore was amazing. But desecrating it, this holy land with your dirty Americanism. Stop. I didn't say it. You did. Um, <laughs> I know. I said what was this? it. This I take full responsibility. Movies. Yeah, I know. Ooh, I know. Ooh, I know. You, um, your name? Uh, that is a really... Good one. And that's the one with the boy and the girl who swap bodies, right? I've yeah. not seen I've not seen it, but obviously I've okay. heard like the, the, yeah, the that, basic that plot. is the basic that's the basic premise, yeah. But they but don't there's... Yeah, they don't do it for like the the titillation factor or for as a joke or anything. It's actually there, there, like takes itself there's, seriously. There's a big like plot twist to it. Mm-hmm. Are you gonna spoil and it? And no. Okay. No, because it is worth watching. Okay. Um visually it's gorgeous it's it's got a little bit of that kind of slice of life aspect but in a way that's um in a way that's kind of just like nice and comforting without being mundane and boring sure i guess and then once kind of the big plot twist hits and stuff that's more it it, to me in a sense it's kind of reminiscent of when i was a kid we you know like the scary stories to tell in the dark Mm -hmm. series yeah. yeah, friends and I, we would like obsess over reading those kind of things and telling kind of, you know, mystery, spooky stories and things to each other. And I'm not saying it goes, you know, full horror movie or anything like that. It doesn't. But in that kind of slight, mysterious, supernatural fun sense, it takes a bit of a twist like that. And it's just like, oh, this is so cool. And it just really was very reminiscent of that sense. <laughs> But also, it is just gorgeous visually. Yeah. So that's a really good one too. Hmm. Um, uh, I know there's I don't know, lots of good movies. Yeah, there just, are. This is a hard one to answer. I mean, I'm also the... just again, I'm also just I guess I'm a really analytical person who, you know, tears mm-hmm. plots apart and then complains about them when they don't make sense. <laughs> well, almost any plot will you can do that too, and then it, you eventually get to that point. But yeah, some yeah, are worse than I'm just, others. I'm just a very mean and annoying like that. <laughs> All right. That. Okay. Well, we we've got about twelve of these questions left. Do you want to hold on to these uh, and I'm, come I'm, on the show again, or do you want to you want I, to power I, through I, them? <laughs> I can keep going if. It's okay. Okay. I, okay. Um, I'm, it's I'm fine. sorry. We're just, we're just, we're, we're making a long episode here. So I just wanted to. Is that make okay? Sure. Yeah, it'll be fine. I'm just, 
I'm just asking, making sure you're all right if you want to keep going. Yeah, I'm okay. Okay. Well, then, let's get into this question from Star-Crossed Swords. Did you ever concept any original Robot Masters that didn't make it into the uh, Archie comics, the Mega Man Archie comics? Also, I love Quake Woman. It's cool to know who created her. Also, do you have any advice for aspiring comics writers slash artists? Um, okay. Where do we start from? Um, I'm glad they like Quake Woman. Um, there was a bit of, you know, kind of, I guess, committee in creation with her. Yeah. Um, there was, and there was some, there were some aspects that kind of, I feel, kind of got away from the initial idea. Mm-hmm. Or didn't quite come through in the end, which, you know, were, I don't want to say disappointing, but, you know. It happens little, sometimes, yeah. I mean, one thing I wish we could have covered, kind of covered more was, like, you know, the idea, like, that she was supposed to look kind of simplistic and budget compared to what Dr. Light could pull off. Uh-huh. The idea that not everyone has the same uh, resources and funding that he does. Yeah. So she was like literally just like this repurposed <laughs> robot. But oh. also some aspects of her design, like she was supposed to have this kind of more like padding around the feet, like cushioning. Mm-hmm. And that didn't get through. And um, also her and even her creator, their color, their uh, color schemes got very heavily re-ramped. I know some people were kind of being like, wow, the doctor got really kind of whitewashed and. Mm hmm. She yeah. kind of did a little, but yeah, you know, you know, but, but, you know, but, um, beyond that, that was, you know, in part of kind of a greater theme and story direction. And the point wasn't, you know, to kind of create a ton of characters for the sake of creating characters because, Mega Man has a ton of characters. <laughs> I was going to say, there's no shortage. There is no shortage. But there is a shortage of ones that identify as female. <laughs> exactly. That is exactly the point there. So, yes. Well, you know, there was there was a plot purpose to explore. Yes. But there was also the point to make it less of a sausage fest <laughs> to a degree. <laughs> to diversify to, things, I suppose. To diversify <laughs> things a little bit and include more, you know, female presenting characters. Yes. I guess you'd say mm -hmm. insofar as robots or whatever, you know. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, there wasn't there wasn't a whole lot beyond that. of Like, I, I'm, you know, like I'm messing around with like my own kind of personal ideas, but nothing for comic necessarily because we're just going to be like, oh, let's throw in characters because this is fun and I want it to get published. And right. then everyone has to look at my brilliant creation. <laughs> yeah. No. Love it, love it, and send me fan art. <laughs> now, I, I know you have a few, like... Make me queen. ...robot or reploid designs that you didn't... that aren't in the comics or anything. Yeah. And, of course, they're much older than even the comics. But you know what I mean. Been like, around you know, it was, but, it wasn't yeah. just... Like I said, like you, there's so many Mega Man characters. Uh, well, yeah, you, just, you didn't want to just make the excuse of, oh, put like, my character in there. It's so cool. My character is cool. Yeah. <laughs> And, you know, it's not like we have a core cast already, and then every single game introduces 8 to 12 new characters yeah. that have to, at the very least, be acknowledged, if not given some development or focus or anything. Yeah. And, whoops, here comes another 8 to 12, and here's some more, and here's <laughs> some more, and we're not necessarily going to kill off them every single set when they come through, so add them to the pile. Yeah. You know, yeah. What what happened to those other characters? Oh, they're they're over there. Just just that's a lot of characters. <laughs> they're out there. Just 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 hold on. Just hold on. Just shut up. They're, they're playing soccer. There we go. That's what they're, they're all play, doing. They're, they're all, all playing, playing soccer, soccer, and they're all against each other. They're all battle and chasing. <laughs> <laughs> they're all chasing and battling. They're all battle and chasing, and they're all playing soccer. That's what's going on in the Mega Man universe. <laughs> <sighs> um so oh gosh there was there was there was a second part <laughs> there was the uh advice <laughs> advice for aspiring comic writers and artists okay um 
I always I always like to say the joke that like don't don't become a comic writer and artist, but I mean <laughs> That's kinda mean, isn't it? It is. It really is. It is kind of mean, but it's obviously it's a joke. It's and obviously can... I can't say that because I have no experience with it. But if it's something, if it's something you really want to do. If it's do... something you if it's something you really want to do, and more importantly, if yes. it's something you enjoy doing. Yes, that is very important. Very important. Mm-hmm. Because if you hate doing it, you will just grow to hate it even more. Uh-huh. It is a labor of love. Yes. Emphasis um, on labor. <laughs> it is. It... <laughs> that is true of any entertainment, but yes. Yeah, it yeah, absolutely applies absolutely. to this. Definitely applies um, to this. And I mean, I feel like, you know, this really does come off as the standard kind of things. But really, there is a lot of just like practice, do it a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, I am probably an absolute hypocrite in this sense, but I also, I don't, I don't really consider myself as serious an artist or writer, I guess, as some others do, but a lot of people, you know, practice, they take that very seriously. They do this all the time. They refine their work. And really the more you do something, the better you, Yeah, you know, you can always, part of it is routine and familiarity. Part of it is also being able to go back and look at your own and seeing what you did in the past and going, oh, God, what is this? Because I'm thinking, <laughs> ew, 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 ew. But, you know, it's, it's almost just like exercise, you know, repetition and building up. Right. But um, I think of like better than just boring <laughs> yeah. advice. Um, I mean, I guess persistence helps. That's part of how I got to get published and do anything was to be, I probably shouldn't just keep saying I was, in- <laughs> that will probably just anger editors out there if people start being really, really obnoxious towards them. Well, I mean, but, there, there is some level of persistence, but also, you know, respect. Yeah, be, be respectful, under- be tactful, be pro- be as professional as you can. Yeah. But be, don't be, be, be easily discouraged. You mm-hmm. do need a bit of a thick skin. You know, people, there are going to be people who say, you know, we don't need you right now versus the jerk who says, oh, I totally want to buy, I totally want your work, but I don't actually want to pay this much for it. And actually, I don't think you're that good to begin with. And actually, how are you even selling this? And I could totally do this on my own. And you suck. <laughs> those type of people are not really worth listening to but there, there's a range sure of responses you'll probably get and some will be better than others and you kind of have to be less favorable right even though it will suck because you're probably putting a lot of self into your work mm-hmm. um and even though it is a lot of your personal work you do kind of have to so be able to separate yourself to it to a point, you know, someone criticizing your work is not necessarily criticizing. You. Right. Or someone criticizing you is not necessarily bashing you. They might be critiquing you. They might be saying, here's where you can improve. And you're saying, shut up. I'm a writer. I know better. Maybe you don't. <laughs> you know, someone pointing out, actually, you're still making very amateur grammar mistake for the past 20 years Mm -hmm. well too bad is not the best response you know (laughs) what what, what does it hurt you to say okay i can make a change sure this next question comes from pc the unicorn alia next to eggman who would you consider to be sonic's greatest enemy slash threat from the sonic franchise comics games and cartoons included deep water (laughs) Really, any water, actually. Any water that gets above his head. Hence, deep water. Well, he's not very tall, so... <laughs> what's it's deep, relative. What's deep for him, I guess, is not necessarily deep for a, <laughs> the average person. But, yeah, I guess that, it is relative. <laughs> that can be said for a lot of people. Also, spikes. Spikes are also a pretty big uh, 
Well, pretty he's big made enemy. of spikes. But but they're not as big of an enemy to Sonic as they are to Mega, Mega Man. Man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's Mega Man's greatest enemy next to Dr. Wily. So, yes, water. Definitely water. <laughs> I mean, that or orcas or semi-trucks or... <laughs> Balls that chase him and a, a giant balls chasing him in a pyramid. That's also a mm. pretty big one. Mm. <laughs> or avalanches while snowboarding down a mountain. Sonic 06's controls. Oh boy, that's. I think that's the player's greatest enemy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <sighs> I was actually talking to someone the other day about, like, you know, breaking Sonic games. I didn't even get into what I've done with Sonic 06. They break themselves. So you don't even I have mean, to try. Yeah. <laughs> like with with the Sonic with with with, uh, with Sonic Chronicles. Uh huh. I managed to pull off. I guess. Thanks, Discord. Discord just went to crap. Oh, it's really going to crap on my. Oh, crap. Hello. Hello. Uh, Whoa, that Dis- was weird. Discord just went to garbage. Yeah. 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 Wow. Okay. <laughs> I, I also pulled off what happened to uh, Discord's blue screen of death. <laughs> oh, okay. Cool. Okay. Now it's back. <laughs> okay. So I don't know if you heard me or not. Uh, I heard you. Not really. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It just. Kinda... I was saying I pulled off the DS's equivalent of a blue screen of death. Okay. With Sonic Chronicles. <laughs> I think. Yeah, I think I've seen like screenshots of that of people who've <laughs> literally just made the game crash and blue screen out, and it's like, yeah, what? it just that's all it was, just a flat blue screen, and then it's yeah. like, yeah, that's it, no game, no game, <laughs> nothing, and it's like, well, fine, I'm sorry, but I was I was not really ha- having fun with this anyway, so yeah, I'm done. That, yeah, that game, uh, and then uh, we were at like a uh, kind of like. I guess journalist event or something mm-hmm. for um for games and they had a demo for Sonic Mania. Did you break that one too? Yep. Good job. Yeah. Finding finding bugs, doing the job for them. Um I think Ian may have taken sh- some screenshots of that one like on his phone. But the entire color display got warped. <laughs> and it's like, "Well, I'm done." I'm getting off this couch. They can't prove I did it. <laughs> I'm just wondering if that was a bug in the game or a bug with the. <laughs> if it was, it the, wasn't this, the display. It wasn't the display. No, no, oh, it was the game. Okay, they had to. They had to like reset everything. Oh wow! <laughs> it, uh, Oops! Oops! Yeah. Oopsie doodles. That's Sonic's biggest enemy is game breaking bugs. <laughs> yep, and I am great at causing them. <laughs> I really wish I could have gotten like or recreated um, falling through the stage in Sonic Adventure 2. Oh, man. That's my, my one of my biggest complaints about it. It's like Cannon's Core or something. Right at the beginning. Oh, yeah. Right at the beginning when Sonic falls. He's fa- Sonic's falling in as he enters the stage. And just, he keeps going and falls through the stage. And this happened to me over and over and over until Sonic oh, yeah? was dead, lost all his life. Um, was that the original, though, or the uh, It was Battle. GameCube. It was GameCube okay. version. Huh. Okay, because I did that in, uh, oh, God, what is it called? Um, I feel really bad now because it's my favorite. Uh, Green Forest. Yeah, love the music in that one. Yes. But um, yeah, fell through that one, and basically it's like you can kind of see like the walls of the level, so it's almost like falling, like it's like the whole like sunken place thing and get <laughs> out or something. <laughs> like yeah. you can kind of see the world above, and you can see a lot of the kind of like ambient effects, like the little dragonflies and things, were still present. Yeah. But the level was just kind of disappearing way, <laughs> way, way off in the distance. Getting really, and... really small, 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 small. Yeah. <laughs> and then I can't remember if I did it on a stream once or not. The bouncing Metal Sonic glitch. What is that also in uh, Sonic Adventure 2? Yeah. Okay. I can make him skip across the water like a stone. It's it's great. <laughs> <laughs> nice i don't think this has anything to do with the question anymore no but... we're, we're we're way off topic but whatever it's fine okay <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> you're fine next question comes from koopaling crew what's your favorite off panel that you wrote and do you think it should make some sort of comeback in the idw series it absolutely should yes and you should write because... it 
I mean, I wouldn't mind that too. Yeah, I'd love to write it. Um, but also, it's just, I don't know, I think it's kind of fun to, I guess, reflect on things and have something lighthearted at the end. <laughs> it's fun to take the crap out on your own work. Yeah, Or on exactly. someone else's work, even. That too. <laughs> but, um, oh, my, my favorite of my own? Sure, why not? Or uh, anybody else's. I guess it doesn't, they didn't specify. No, 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 no. I'll be an egomaniac. Oh, okay, uh, sure. Um... Well, uh, no, they did. They did specify. They did a favorite off panel you wrote. So, yeah, it is yours. God, I can't even remember everything. Um, <laughs> you wrote quite the, a few. I know. The ones that were like Marines fan fiction versions <laughs> of events. <laughs> yes. For Pirate Plunder Panic that uh, <laughs> Ben Hernandez drew. <laughs> so, okay. I, I mean, if you're, if, you're, if you're laughing right now, that's a pretty good reaction, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I love those. Yes, those are great. Those, those are pretty fun. Uh -huh. Um, you know, especially like the one where it's like, yeah, where like Blaze is like a stereotypical princess. Yeah, <laughs> on the ship, with silver, and yeah, Blaze burns the fan fiction after. And... <laughs> yeah. Something that was kind of cute too is that like the one where like um, it's got a uh, marine like you know kind of envisioning everyone as her personal pirate crew, and. There was a design Jen created for Amy Rose there. And then the, you know, last uh, Sonic Universe arc we did, which was also pirate themed. Mm -hmm. um, we did, uh, it was kind of like a one piece riff uh, variant cover. Right. Yeah, I remember that. And that was like the one cover I got to color. Mm -hmm. And Jen drew that one and she reused that design for Amy on it so good that was a kind of fun little <laughs> i guess kind of callback uh -huh. to that i don't know that made me happy <laughs> but um but i guess that was that's probably some of my favorite like what else did i um i guess some of the ones where it's like you take like any overly serious character you know like shadow yeah of course and make fun of him <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Or like any kind of serious, like some of the ones with like, uh... oh, there was one where I guess it was a little meta, but I still kind of liked it where it was, um, uh, oh, God, what was the arc? Uh, Shattered, where mm -hmm. Son uh, Sonic, geez. Uh, Knuckles and Amy are looking for the Master Emerald Shards. Mm -hmm. So Knuckles is kind of setting up like Sonic Adventure 2 style and, you know, kind of referencing Pumpkin Hill. Mm -hmm. And Amy basically cuts him off at the knees partway through it and tells him his, you know, treasure hunting methods are really outdated by about like, you know, 15 years or so, <laughs> which is, you know, how long ago the game had yeah. come out at that point. And at the end, Knuckles is, you know, I ain't going to let it get to me. <laughs> <laughs> Knuckles, Knuckles, you're, you're, you're right. Gonna... <laughs> Knuckles, your uh, emerald hunting radar really sucks, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's just kind of fun to like, you know, kind of use the lyrics to kind of yeah poke back. I mean, I'm, I'm sure there were some people who might not have caught that, but for me, it was fun. Always lyric lyric references always get me too. <laughs> um, that's always fun. Oh, okay. Just sorry, I actually peeked at the chat here, and someone oh no uh, brought up yeah brought up the one where uh, Chip meets Dark Gaia, but it's just a version of him. Yeah, <laughs> it's just it's just chip, um, but it's but yeah, it's all but it's, dark and <laughs> yeah. So a funny thing with that one was, um, at that point, I was told specifically to not uh, do the whole, we'll just say evil slash anti version of character. Sure. So it was kind of more, I guess, like the which you could argue in a circular way is the same thing, but um, you know sort of the evil planet of hats type thing. Mm -hmm. So it was more like, oh, okay, then what? He can have like a goatee and a top hat or something. <laughs> or leather jacket. <laughs> well, no, yeah. So that's what ended up happening, though, was uh, Evan Stanley ended up drawing him like that anyway. Yeah. And I'm like, uh, they, they told me not to do that, but <laughs> we'll, we'll see if we get away with it, I guess. And it happened, so... <laughs> 
<laughs> it's probably just because it's an off-panel, one-off gag thing, but still. Yeah, but I mean, because that's what I said, because originally I kind of wanted to do that, and then they're like, no, don't. And it's like, aw, okay. But it happened anyway. <laughs> One thing I was kind of sad, though, was that she had it originally that, like, I think in the end, that little evil dark guy is, like, like above him. He's like, fight me! <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that got cut, I think. It was just like a little... But, you know, it just kind of made his little <laughs> tiny, impotent anger funnier. Uh-huh. <laughs> All right. Let's get on into this next question from Connell T. What are Cassia and Clove's favorite toppings on pizza? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Do they even like pizza? <laughs> have they even had pizza? I don't know. You I don't think they've... You think I pizza... don't think they would have gotten to try pizza. You think pizza would be the universal food? <laughs> I don't think in their... In their particular situation, that they would have gotten to try pizza yet. Oh, that makes me sad. That's like the saddest thing about them. Yes, the saddest thing ever. Uh, about uh huh. Them. It truly is. It well and truly is. Well and truly. <laughs> uh huh. Um, you don't make fun of me. Well, since there seems to be a green theme going on, I'm patronizing. Let's just say, that, okay, clo <laughs> clove. Maybe she likes green olives. Sure, we'll go with that. green olives. Are good, and black olives on pizza suck. <laughs> I will fight anyone who says otherwise. I don't know. <laughs> my relationship with olives has been tenuous. I don't hate. Get them. out of here! I don't. You're hate not them. my friend anymore. <laughs> Liar! I don't hate them, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> they're fine on <sighs> pizza. I don't think I've ever had green olives on pizza though. What is wrong? I don't know. They don't seem to be as is common in the states no, i don't i don't I want to generalize so. i know it's a big country but like, i think you're right though I but well like going to like sandwich shops and things it's like it's olives always, and it's like oh they're just black olives it's always black yeah and, and that's it yep it's always and black it, it bores me <laughs> sorry we're boring down here we like our boring bland <laughs> no flavored american food thank you 50 50 states and one type of olive. Get out of here. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Get out. <laughs> well, our country's kind of stuck here. We can't move it. So sorry. We're not. Leaving. I don't know. <sighs> All right. <laughs> I think Cassia would like pizza eventually. Just, but I don't just think... regular pizza. <laughs> well, she'd, she'd probably want to try just about everything. You yeah. Know. Mm hmm. <laughs> if if you can put it on a piece of pizza, she'd probably be willing to try it. Sure. And if she didn't like it, she'd probably blame someone else for it. But <laughs> we are at the final one. This is sort of like a twenty questions in style thing from from my good buddy Purvis. Uh, he, Hi. He said over like a bunch of real quick questions. Some of them okay. are kind of silly, and uh, so we're just going to go ahead and run down the list. <laughs> So, Okie doke. So here we go. Here's the first one. How much you bench, sis? <laughs> I'm I'm working on not needing a wheelchair anymore, okay? Um <laughs> geez. You know what? Maybe give me like six months to a year and we'll come back to this one. Okay. <laughs> I'm working on it. <laughs> All right, good. Uh top three books. Uh the the ones that are on the highest shelf, I guess. Okay. Perfect. Are they, I'm, I'm assuming there's more than three up there, though. Yeah, but the ones that are the highest are the top. Okay. We'll go with that. Uh, choose a color that defines you and explain in no less than 200 words. I like green. It's alive. Okay. I am also alive, technically. Cool. Uh, what, is this, <laughs> what is the story of the last favorite food you discovered? <laughs> The story of the last favorite, not the last, he doesn't care what your last favorite food you discovered was. He just wants to know the story behind it. Well, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I live in a city with a lot of great food. That That's, that's kind of. Having been there, that's true. <laughs> you know, we're we're a little spoiled here. <laughs> I've been eating a lot of olives lately. <laughs> <laughs> I think we talked about this last episode. Oh my god, we probably did. We did talk about olives on the last episode, and you said you hated me because I, me and all, me and olives don't always get along. Oh, 
Okay, but it said it said he wanted a story to go with. I guess I don't know what he wants. Uh, he's, okay, he's, well, <laughs> Purvis, he's a weirdo. Well, okay, here here's a story, and I will make it slightly related to okay a Sonic person, so so people will give a damn about it. <laughs> um, I God, I guess it was almost a year ago. I don't know. Um, I bought a bunch of fancy olives at St. Lawrence market. And I didn't necessarily know what they all were, but I thought they were all probably going to be pretty good. And so I gave one to John Gray to try and told him, you know, to pick whichever one he wanted. And he said it was good. He said he enjoyed it. I mean, we were kind of going nuts because St. Lawrence market is amazing for food anyway. But afterwards, when I actually got home and tried all these olives myself, I thought the one he tried was like the worst of the bunch and have like felt guilty about have been had subjected him to the least great olive of the bunch because the other ones were so amazing. So there's my story. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I was sad about olives and he should have tried a different one. What a jerk. No, I'm the jerk. Okay. We'll I go. didn't give him better olives. <laughs> all right. Well, maybe. I hauled maybe... them all to myself. <laughs> well, maybe then you can tell us who is Spain. Not what who is isn't... Spain. Not what is Spain. Who is Spain? Who isn't Spain? Okay. I, I, I'm sure. I can't argue with that. I don't know how, first of all. And also, I mean, it makes sense. Uh, go into detail about your favorite social science. <laughs> <laughs> Do you need a list? No, I want to say something sarcastic and witty. And I just... <laughs> what are these questions? It's Purvis. This is normal for him. <laughs> uh... I can say that because I know him and he's a friend. But... <laughs> uh... Can I just talk about all of some more? Sure. I don't want to. There, reverse psychology. Perfect, perfect. Moving on. <laughs> All right, and our last question. Whom's to have let the dogs out? Bloodhound gang. I mean, you're not wrong. I'm not. There, there. You, you said you said short answers. Yeah, yeah. Well, there we go. <laughs> and that's it. That's all of them. We got through all of them. Yay! <laughs> we made it. And I, I don't feel enlightened in the least. Well, I mean, you were the one who had to do the enlightening. You had to answer the questions. You know what? What? We, we could have had some insightful questions. Or I could have gone on with certain uh, topics for uh -huh. another hour. Uh-huh. And yet this is where we are. This is where we've ended up. And I blame you. Okay. I don't know what I did, but sure. <laughs> I just, I just, I just read the questions. I'm not, I don't control them. I know. You make this too easy. It's, uh, whatever. <laughs> Why do, how do I make, what do you, what do I do? What, how, what do you mean by I make things too easy? Because I don't argue. <laughs> exactly. You just play with it. You just roll with it. You I'm just all, smile and nod. That's what I always do. You know that. You've known I, me. I know. You've known me. I for, know. You've known me for I don't know how too long, long it's been. Too damn long. It's, probably. I'm surprised you still put up with me. To be honest, I probably get, because you just roll with it. <laughs> I've been give. I'd given up on me a long time ago, but nope, you're still here. <laughs> eh, you're okay. Yeah. 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 You are I mean, too. You are too. You're okay too. I'm passable. <laughs> I mean, at least a few people are listening. I assume. <laughs> uh, yeah, we have a, we have a pretty good crowd going here during the recording. So, <laughs> oh god, she's talking about olives again. <laughs> olives and the weather and her socks. <laughs> We've only talked Look about. Look at me, guys. I used to work in comic books. Uh, well, I don't know. More olives right there. <laughs> you know, I... It's a big dump. It's a big dump of I've olives. Actually, I've actually been debating if I can get to this one stupid store for very specific olives. 
<laughs> well, you know, go go to it. Have you seen what grocery stores look like lately? It's, it's, whatever. Go anyway. Maybe they have olives there still. I, I don't know. Are people starting to raid the olives? <laughs> Are they reselling <laughs> olives on eBay now? They might be. <laughs> I mean, I wanted... I wanted to buy some chicken and there was no chicken. No chicken. <laughs> wow. Uh huh. Man, they're um, they're even they're even going crazy up there. Man, thought, I thought <sighs> I thought Canada was a little more uh, responsible than that, but I well, don't I know. Mean, people weren't being you know mean or rude or anything. It was no, I know. There was there was kind of a lot of you know polite bewildered chuckling and. <laughs> You know, kind of people going, hey, I can't, you know, reach that last box of weird off-brand pasta that no one else wants at the very back of the row because yeah. everyone else has cleared it out. Right. And, <laughs> you know, can someone reach it for me kind of things. And I'm glad that I usually have a ton of rice on hand anyway because there was like no more rice <laughs> except for like, you know, that like instant minute rice stuff or like pre-cooked rice things mm -hmm. or whatever nonsense that is. Yeah. The microwave rice. <laughs> Nobody wants that. Garbage rice. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for joining me again, Aaliyah. I like food. Me too. Who would cool. have guessed? Food is delicious. Food is good when you have it. Yes. And that's, less good when you don't. That's the key is having it. Having food. I hope everyone else out there has food and the, and everything. I so. hope everyone can stay healthy and wash your damn hands and not sneeze on your neighbor. Unless they deserve it. I want everybody to stay at least six feet away from me at all times. Well. That's just in general. That's, that's not because of anything. No. <laughs> that's not because of anything happening. That's just in general. Uh, <laughs> yeah. These are, these I'm not, are interesting. I'm not that antisocial. <laughs> I don't believe you. Now I have an excuse. <laughs> Okay. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> well, we'll see if I'm doing this next time. All right. Um, we, we, we'll guess... have to get more questions next time because now we've gone through all of them. <laughs> okay. If anyone wants to ask me... Um, ask if you want to ask Lee ask about me olives. Questions. No, please don't. <laughs> ask me about the time I felt guilty about giving John Gray the wrong type of olive. Well, you just said, you just said, don't <laughs> ask about olives. And, and, and now you say, ask about all, make up your mind. <laughs> ask about all the times John Gray has accused me of plotting to shove him out onto Lake Ontario onto an ice floe. Well, I don't know. It sounds like he deserves it. If he's, if he keeps saying it, he must deserve it. He must well, know, he, might. he must know what he did. <laughs> Well, yeah, he knows what he did. <laughs> he knows what he did. That's ominous. I'm but... sure everyone's seen the the Mama Robotnik. Of course. That I had to color. Of course. That got censored. <laughs> That's mean. Why would they censor it? They didn't censor it for you. You no, had to see the whole thing. Me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know. With her little treasure trail and everything. Oh, boy. <laughs> is that going to be censored? No. Oh. No one has to know what that is. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe we should call it quits now. Okay, I think we're done. We're done. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Lee, for coming back on. Thank you, everyone, for putting up with me. And uh, everyone for putting up with me. <laughs> well, they have to put up now, with now me. Let's, now let's go. Let's break out. Let's break out Metal Ian and have him... I thought, some of these I, thought questions. I replaced you with a robot last time. Yeah, well, you did. And now we're replacing Ian with a robot, so. 
<laughs> turn him back on. All right, let's break out the robot. Let's break out Metal Ian and get into the Q and A. If you want to ask some questions for Ian uh, and have them potentially be read by a robot, email us at bumblecastyahoo.com. Ask us on Twitter at bumblecast. Uh, you can also contribute five dollars via our uh, Kofi at uh, co dash fi dot com slash bumblecast. Uh, you can uh, ask down in the YouTube comments below if you're watching this on YouTube, or you can uh, ask your questions via Patreon comments messages, or you can also ask in the Q and A channel on the Discord. Keep in mind that if the question has been answered within the last few episodes is on the FAQ over at BumbleKing.com or is about past Sonic plans, we likely won't answer it. We won't be able to answer it. So if your question hasn't been answered in a while, check those places. And uh, if it still hasn't been answered in a while, then uh, maybe go ahead and just ask it again. Um, Sometimes these things slip through the cracks. We do get a lot of questions, so keep that in mind. Also, like... We get multiple questions from multiple different places, so trying to keep up with them all is a little hectic. So anyway, let's go ahead and get into uh, our first Q&A question, priority Q&A question. This one comes to us courtesy of Connell T. I don't know if this question has already been answered, but in the pre-reboot Archie Sonic Comics, Eggman's henchbots, Orbot, and Cubot appeared after Snively left and betrayed Eggman, acting as emergency lackeys. My strangely specific question is, did they appear in the post-reboot at the Sonic Colors point, or were they around before then? I guess they'd have to, since SA-55 didn't exist, since Sonic Unleashed occurred after Colors in the comic continuity. It wouldn't be narrative-breaking to say they showed up a little earlier, but to keep things simple, sure, say they showed up during the Planet Wisp scheme. Our next question comes from the Imagine Breaker 121212. Huge question in regards to the lore, the Master Emerald, Chaos Emerald, Soul Emerald, Super Emeralds, the Phantom Ruby, Rubies, and the Power of the Stars are a mysterious case. Me and Tyler Renee M. had a serious translate link to research what the kanji referring to the Chaos Emeralds meant and found that it refers to some kind of, some type of chaos kampf, formless nature beyond space time itself. But I want to ask if all these cosmic slash chaotic items slash objects in reference to Sega and lore uh, I mentioned above are inferred as some absolute pan-dimensional power sources or maybe undimensioned power sources moving in no space time and all like generations. Are you allowed to give us insight or allowed to answer these questions? I'm not sure what you're asking, honestly. Absolute pan-dimensional would mean they exist across all dimensions at all times and that clearly isn't the case. The Soul Emeralds seem to stay in Blaze's dimension unless physically moved. The Chaos Emeralds seem to hop between Sonic's dimension and the human one willy-nilly. The Power of the Stars, if I recall correctly, is a power that bridges the gap between Sonic and Blaze's worlds. Beyond that I don't think there's any concrete definition to their existence. Here's one from Crooker. Crooker! Hey Ian, I noticed that there are some subtle but distinct differences between how you characterize the Sonic cast and the old Archie stuff and the current IDW stuff. I've seen you mention before that this is because of Sega's hands-on involvement with character notes and the like, so my questions are, how fundamentally different are the cast and Sonic especially between the two versions? Is there any major mental readjusting you had to do when it came to writing them for IDW? I'd love to hear what your thinking process was on those characters on who those characters were slash are. Thanks. For the most part, no, they're the same. Amy is a little different in that Sega specifically asked we tone down her open affections for Sonic. Gemeral is certainly different. Things were different during his Archie appearance, and we got very specific notes on how he should be characterized once he appeared in IDW Sonic. The most notes have been on Shadow. I think they're steering him in a new direction, and I'm still feeling it out. And our final Patreon uh, priority question comes from Andrew D. How likely are you to include Easter eggs or tributes to the Sonic movie? I really want to see Eggman drinking a latte now. I legit don't know if things would be more touchy because a movie studio is involved, 
or if something subtle enough would be okay. All right, you little tin can. Let's move on into the standard Q&A. Here's one from Dimensional Duelatrix Draco. After reading the latest IDW Sonic comic, are the Deadly Six immune to the virus since some of them appear to be too close to the Zombots? You need to have direct contact with the virus for it to spread. Being too close doesn't matter. That said, if one were to fully tap into the Chaos Emerald power, they could use their electromagnetic powers to control the virus so it doesn't infect them. Next up, from Liam B. Why did you guys wait as long as you did to bring Sonic and Sally back together? Was it a choice for convenience, or was it to make it more definite when they reunited that it was serious love instead of the puppy love they had before they first broke up? The slap was a big deal at the time, so their rebound needed to be equally big. It's very easy to tear things down, but it takes much longer to build things up. I wanted Sonic and Sally to first re-establish their friendship and respect for each other, and then from there rekindle the romance. I didn't want it to be taken for granted. Next question comes from Bowler Hat Wearer. May I ask in the first issue of the IDW Sonic number one Tangle and Whisper comic, the gray squirrel with bushy wine red eyebrows in the left corner of the first panel behind the vegetable sa- vegetable stand. Is that a nod to Elias Acorn of the Archie Sonic comics? No. Or if it was the intention, I don't know about it. And finally, our last question from James M. Ian, whenever we see naked Mobians, why aren't certain body parts visible? Because it's a cartoon. Before we head out, I'd like to give a shout out and thank you to the fleshy humans whose contributions help make this show possible. Big thanks to Daniel H, Alex P, Con Alti, Crooker, Blue Title Gamer, Koopa Link Crew 128, Andrew D, Chris A, John B, Diane W, James F, Jennifer R, Rev in the Light, Lisa M, Frederick, D Gamma F Wow, Justin S, Papadri Papolas, Silly String, Two Caro, Scruffy Matt, Lee HK, Overthinking Films, Don B, John M, Chow Vell, Mike B, Duas Dis Din, Samuel P, Justin G, Sin Fritz, Dave M, Sam Cybercat, and Final Neil. You can find the real Ian on Twitter at Ian Flynn BKC. You can also go to BumbleKing.com where you'll find his portfolio. FAQs, con schedules, and more. Don't forget to also check out Draugoon, Ian's original webcomic featuring art by the amazing Adam Bryce Thomas at Draugoon.com, updates every Friday. If you want to follow me, I'm on Twitter at KyleJCRB. You can also head on over to KNGI.org where you can find archived episodes of the Bumblecast in MP3 downloadable format. You can find all the podcast links and everything there as well. You can also listen to my other show, Nitro Game Injection, which is a video game music show that streams live on Mondays at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, On the day this comes out, uh, it will be the 399th episode. So next week, tune in on on that Monday because it's going to be the 400th episode of Nitro Game Injection. You can keep up with the show on Twitter at Bumblecast, email us at bumblecast at yahoo.com, and listen to the show on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, YouTube, and KNGI.org. Get yourself some Bumble swag and some Bumble gear over at shop.spreadshirt.com slash Bumble store. Got all sorts of fun stuff over there for you to uh, adorn your uh, body and your uh, domicile with. Go check them out. You can also catch us live streaming on Twitch at twitch.tv slash bumblecastgaming on Sundays at 10 p.m. Eastern Time, along with other bonus extra streams throughout the week. Keep an eye on Twitter for any announcements. That's gonna wrap it up for this episode of the Bumblecast. Kyle, any last words before you are fully assimilated into my robo-collective and forced to carry out my will in an eternity of enslavement? Uh, no, I don't have anything else to add, uh, except I'm time to, it's about time to shut you down. I think, once we're done with this, you're, you're going back in the box. You're going back in the box! You're no fun at all. I guess I'll have to kill you for your insolence. All right, that's it, that's it, that's it. Just come on, come on, here we go. You're, you're done, you're done, you're done. 
You didn't say you sent me a screenshot, and I don't have the messenger open. You gave me a mirror. I think Lee's the one who's going to kill B, and not the other way I around. I will. I will do it. <laughs> yeah, she, she will. That's fine. <laughs> I've been I've been waiting. I'm surprised it's taken this long, to be honest. Figured you'd have killed me a long time ago. Well, you have to get in line behind John Gray. So I remember uh, our editor at Archie sent me to get donuts once for everybody. Uh-huh. And it was super disgustingly hot, and all the toppings and icing and everything melted off <laughs> when, I, when I was walking back. And they wouldn't let me. They wouldn't let me in through the one side of the building. They're like, "No, you have to walk around the entire freaking building." Oh no! So I came back with donuts for everybody, and everything had like swarmed <laughs> off the side. <laughs> It was real. Uh, <laughs> it was disgusting. <laughs> I didn't have to pay for it because Archie did. So yeah, Archie. Good. Glad Archie paid for something. He's finally pulling his weight around here. I know. Ginger. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I wasn't gonna go there, but okay. Unable to talk. I listen. I'd rather talk to you than than him. Than Ian. Right now, especially because he can't, because he can't talk anyway. So what am I gonna Actually, do? Actually, yeah, he, he legit can't. It's so sad. People keep calling on the phone, and it's like, <laughs> give me that thing, hand it over. <laughs> Don't, yeah. It's like I can't talk to him right now. <laughs> Tell people like, go away. Te text, no talking. Text, Get out. Text only. Does he? Does he have a whiteboard for you? That he writes on. <laughs> Not yet. Okay. You know. We did that at a convention once. I lost my voice because I was guess it, guess I was, I was sick. I know, big shocker. <laughs> I was sick at a convention, but oh, I yeah. I lost my voice, and so I was using my sketch pad for notes, and it was it was incredibly <laughs> awkward and slow <laughs> because people don't look when you have a nice big sign up explaining you know policies or prices or anything. Right. You know how much are the free signatures? They're free. <laughs> it's, it's hard to parse words. Words words are difficult. And we're, then you just look like a jerk if you're tapping the sign, you know? So Yeah, well, tap the sign. <laughs> You've been listening to the Bumblecast, a co-production of Bumble King Comics and the KNGI Network. Original theme music composed by Ken Coda Snyder. Remixed intro by T Lopes. Find out more information, along with podcast feeder links, MP3 downloads, and more at BumbleKing.com and KNGI.org. Um, I'm sorry, my phone is ringing. I was going to say, there's something buzzing over there. Second, sorry. Tell him to tell him to go away. Yeah. Screw off. I'm very sorry about that. You're fine. Nobody has to know what happened. Uh, I'll I'll take it out. Yeah, I know. I'm just <laughs> it threw off my pacing. Okay. <laughs>